According to a recent study, four straps might have some merit, though it's too early to draw definitive conclusions. Should you be doing four straps? While definitions vary, the technique of four straps invariably refers to repetitions being performed past failure, whether by assistance of a spotter, a change in technique, or simply a reduction in range of motion. Why would going past failure increase muscle growth? Well, the latest meta-analysis on how close to failure a set is taken and muscle growth has found more muscle growth as a set is taken closer to failure, and the effect is large enough to care about. However, pay close attention to this graph. What do you notice? That's right, it's missing a side. We only had studies on ending a set before failure versus ending it through failure. No studies to date had looked at training past failure on the left side of the y-axis. But there's more to this story. After all, drop sets can be viewed as a form of forced reps. Once failure is reached, the load is dropped as a means to extend the set. In a drop set, a set is taken to failure before immediately reducing the load being used and performing another set. This reduction in weight is repeated until the desired number of sets is achieved. It's no different than bending your arms on a dumbbell fly as you reach failure to get four reps. In both cases, the amount of force our muscles need to produce is being reduced. Are you still with me? Good. Drop sets could be seen as a form of four reps. A meta-analysis by Coleman and colleagues found similar muscle growth when comparing straight sets with traditional rest intervals to drop sets. Does that mean one long four rep drop set is as good as straight sets? Not so fast. On average, the drop set group performed 30% more sets. In other words, for every 10 sets the straight set group did, the drop set group performed 13 sets. That notwithstanding, this does provide support for the idea of training past failure. The drop set groups took around 50 to 70% less time training, but achieved the same muscle growth by doing four reps. But that's not the only training technique that involves a form of four repetitions. Pre-exhausting a muscle does too. If you're looking for a coach to handle your training, consider Myodapt. Myodapt works just like a coach. It asks you about your schedule, how much time you have to train on different days. It asks you a bunch of questions around your recovery, like your stress and your sleep and your diet, all to make sure it can give you a truly individualized program for you. It even asks you if there's any muscle groups you would like to bring up, and it specializes and prioritizes those. There's nothing else like it out there currently, and I think you'll really enjoy Myodapt. To register interest and be notified when it launches, go to myodapt.com and put in your email. You'll receive an email when it launches and be able to lock in a lifetime discount back to pre-exhausting. In the pre-exhaust technique, a single joint movement is performed immediately before jumping into a multi-joint movement for the same muscle. Let me give you an example. In a study by Trinidad and colleagues in 2019, participants in the pre-exhaust group performed a set of leg extensions to failure with 20% of their one repetition maximum immediately before doing their first set of leg press. The traditional group, on the other hand, just did three sets of leg press. The results? Similar muscle growth in the pre-exhaust versus traditional group. In contrast, using a very similar design, one of the only other studies on pre-exhausting by Weir and colleagues in 2015 found greater increases in quadricep size of all four heads when performing pre-exhaust sets compared to traditional sets. Why the different results? Well, in this study by Trinidad and colleagues, no rest was taken between the set of leg extensions as a pre-exhaust and the leg press. Whereas in the study by Aguiar and colleagues, participants rested for 30 seconds between the leg extensions and the leg press. And finally, as of the making of this video, just a few days ago, there was the publication of a third study on the pre-exhaust technique in hypertrophy, finding no differences when volume was matched for, so the participants in the traditional group and the pre-exhaust group performed a similar number of sets. So overall, some weak support for the idea that training a muscle past failure by pre-exhausting it could be beneficial. Before we get carried away and start pre-exhausting and performing four reps on everything, there's an important caveat to the studies by Trinidad and colleagues and Aguiar and colleagues. The training was not volume equated. The pre-exhaust groups performed an additional set of leg extensions that the traditional group didn't do. Since more volume reliably causes more muscle growth, it's difficult to ascertain whether the difference in muscle growth was due to actually pre-exhausting and going past failure or simply due to the additional set performed. Regardless, these findings provide some support for the concept of forced reps, and I personally find the pre-exhaust technique interesting. If you'd like to see me make a whole video on the topic, let me know in the comments. 
To summarize this section on training to failure and techniques to train past failure, training closer to failure causes greater muscle growth. Preliminary evidence on the drop set technique and to a lesser extent for the pre-exhaust technique provides some support for forced reps, though it is somewhat indirect evidence and the number of studies for pre-exhaust especially is limited. This brings us to the present day and the pre-printing of a super important study I was involved in headed by Steen Larsen. This was the very first direct study on forced reps measuring muscle growth. In our study, we compared the effects of training to failure with a full range of motion in the single leg calf raise to training past failure, doing forced partials until a participant either reached volitional failure or was unable to move their ankle at all anymore. That's right, they performed what I call a lengthened superset. I already see you commenting. God damn it, Milo. I thought we could make it through one video without you saying the word lengthened. You thought wrong. It's not a phase. Lengthen partials, lengthen partials my life. All that to say, the fact that participants performed forced lengthened partial reps after failure confounds the study slightly, since we know lengthened training is good for building muscle. Anyways, which leg do you think grew more? That's right, the calf performing forced reps slash lengthened supersets saw around 40% more muscle growth. Was it the forced reps? Was it the lengthened training? I'm inclined to think it was both, especially based on the remainder of the research on both lengthened training and on forced rep-like techniques. To examine this question, we have another study in the works comparing lengthened partials to lengthened supersets. But hey, hey, you have questions, and I got answers. Do you really think forced reps are the smartest workout technique? No but I think they could be worth experimenting with. I'm certainly intrigued, and I think you can be too. Why should you perform forced reps? They may cause more muscle growth than staying shy of failure, or even just training to failure. Who should perform forced reps? Anyone can try them, but I think they might be most valuable for people with limited time to train. Training closer to and past failure might be a good way to get more out of each set, more bang for your buck. Isn't training past failure unsafe? I don't know. Is it? I I'm serious. If you're aware of research to that effect, please let me know. But until there's a compelling rationale for calling a slightly arduous way of exercising dangerous, I would hesitate to. On that note though, do pick an exercise where doing forced reps is safe. A flat bench press with no spotter is no good for example. To incorporate forced reps, I would perform what I call a lengthened superset. Once you've reached full range of motion failure, keep doing reps in the lengthened position until you can't get another lengthened partial. That's what we did in our study, featuring Steen Larsen, and it might offer a double whammy of lengthened training plus past failure training. Exactly how you choose to apply forced reps or lengthened supersets is part science, part art. At least until we have enough research to rely on firmly. I swear to God, I'm like the goddamn Picasso of exercise science. People are always complaining about, God damn it, there go exercise scientists again, no we're complicating everything. Excuse me, you'll get no reply from me. I'll be in the gym, doing four straps past failure for science. If you got this far and you enjoy the deep dive on four straps, please leave a like on the video and subscribe. It really helps out. We're trying to reach 2000 likes on this video. Dr. Milo Wolf, ties for long sleeve t-shirt. See you next time.